Praise and peace from God, our Father, and from the Son Jesus in all of us this morning. This morning we meditate, meditate in the word of Jesus to this gentleman. Find him today, you will be in paradise. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Eternity, eternity, started for that man right there. When he repented from all his sins and turned to God. I heard a story about the cemetery in Indiana that has this, uh, and this tombstone has this words. It says, Pause the stranger when you pass me by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be. So prepare for that and follow me. That could be, that could be chilling. But then someone scratched underneath that description. To follow you, I'm not content until I know which way you went. <laughs> well, kind of smart. That's the question that the human kind sometimes asks if they don't know Jesus. But when you know Jesus, then it's completely different. When you know Christ, then you for sure say, I will be in heaven. Today, there is the last Sunday in the church here. What it does mean for us, we can have the words in our uh, sign. But this is the last time of the year when we talk about <laughs> Jesus' return. But for some reason, the reading of the gospel is about Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus' death on the cross, which we heard and read and meditate on Easter or on Good Friday. But the thing is, we are saying goodbye to the readings of the Gospel of Luke, and now we are going into the readings of Matthew. But if you are here, and I'm not, and I'm sure most of you were here during the day, during the year, we started with the readings of Luke on chapter nine until this very chapter, chapter twenty-third, and all the readings put together. They tell us about Jesus' mission and what Jesus came to do on earth and what he did, the miracles he performed, the ways and the days he taught the people. But one thing was always in Jesus' lips and one thing was always in Jesus' mind and he would repeat to the disciples so when the time would come, they would not be scared. I am going to Jerusalem. Jesus repeated that many, many times in almost all the chapters. I am going to Jerusalem. There was an appointment. Jesus had an appointment with death in Jerusalem. He would be crucified. He would die for you and for me, for all our sins. But not this is not the end of the story. Jesus said in Luke, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 18, the Son of Man himself, he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked. They will speak upon in him. And after flogging him, they will kill him. But on the third day, he will rise. Jesus' prophecies, Jesus' words, Jesus' teachings, all, all, guide us to this very moment in Jesus' life, where in the top of the cross, Jesus finally. It was all prophesied. 
but see what happened in the gospel this morning. The Holy Spirit and in his infinite knowledge and perfect wisdom, wisdom elected and divide the narrative of the crucifixion in between four different gospels. This is not a work of a man, this is work of God, the Holy Spirit, establishing a wonderful story, a wonderful teaching, so we don't miss any of the details of the Son of God's crucifixion. We have to understand and the focus this morning, it is not the death of Christ. As we are talking about the last Sunday of church here, the main lesson today is about eternity. It is about forgiveness. They all, they, those two words come together. They are so important. When we receive forgiveness and we are certain of God's forgiveness for us, then we have no doubt about eternity. And uh, the last, I don't know if, if you pay attention to the gospel this morning, you'll see that Jesus taught that lesson twice while he is on the cross. And how strange must be when people are mocking Jesus are spitting on him. He says, he looked down and to the, the whole squad, the whole crucifixion squad, soldiers, Jewish, leaders, people, curious people, everybody. They are all making fun of Jesus and mocking him and look down and instead they say, God sent fire to kill all them. Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. The first lesson is someone that we are misfitting. It is asking God for forgiveness on my behalf. That could be weird. That could be strange. But that's, this is one of the last things Jesus did. And people look upon the cross and think, I need forgiveness to have eternity. So Jesus' words have an incredible comfort for that sensitive soul to know that he or she or all her sins sometimes, as he thinks, sometimes can not be forgiven. A lot of people don't come to church because they think their sins cannot be forgiven. And you might know people that say, if I go to church, the roof will fall over my head. I heard that many, many times. So Jesus looked down for all of those who are mocking and mistreating him and making fun of him and he say, Father, forgive them. So if they can receive forgiveness, then all of us will. Because God offers and wants to give eternity to all. Eternity is not something just for Lutherans. Eternity it is for everyone. And then the last lesson comes when Jesus is about to get to heaven. This thief comes to Jesus and thinks, well, if he forgave all of those people, he might forgive me as well. He was hanging the cross not because he was a saint. He killed. He raped. He did all kinds of bad stuff. Otherwise, he would not be there. And to this man, God says, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The words of Jesus to the criminal have comfort. Again, have comfort to those who wonder if they are too evil to receive forgiveness. But the main, the main lesson in our text today, it is not just forgiveness. 
Jesus wants to offer eternity. Jesus wants to make sure people have eternity in their hearts, but to have it, you have to come to Him. And you ask, you have to ask for forgiveness. Now we return to the beginning of the reading, and Jesus sees the people crying because of Jesus' situation on the cross. Because of all the suffering he's going through, and Jesus tells them, Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. Cry for yourself. Because there will be a time when you will feel sorry for yourself if you do not faithfully uh, live with Christ. One day, the same Jesus that is hanging on the cross, and this is the main lesson of the last Sunday on church here. This Christ that you saw on the cross, one day will come in a cloud. Then you will feel sorry for yourselves if you do not receive and ask forgiveness. Then you will feel sorry for yourself if you didn't live a Christian life. Christ was on the cross just once. When he comes back, he comes in glory with power, but with eternity. Eternity for us, brothers and sisters, it starts the day you're baptized. Eternity for us is today, as we faithfully be and are with Christ. Eternity, it is a promise to Jesus when he said, I am the door, I am the truth, I am the way. Jesus didn't say, I will be. No, Jesus says, says in John, I am. So eternity is yours today, as it was for that thief on the cross, when he received forgiveness. Jesus is coming back to judge the living and the dead. He is coming for you and for me. He comes in a cloud. But for us Christians who receive forgiveness every single day when we come to Christ, it should not and will not be a day of terror. It's going to be a day of rejoicing and happiness. Because he's not coming to condemn you and me. He is coming to judge the living and the dead. He is coming to give us all the blessing of the eternal home. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. We are all his children. We receive his blood, his body, and his Blood during Lord's Supper. It is a reminder that we are sinners, but also a reminder that He is present, that eternity is ours. All sins are forgiven. Prepare your hearts and minds to receive the Lord because He can happen any day, any time. Hang on to the Bible teachings. Forgive those who need to be forgiven. Ask God's forgiveness every day. Is spread the good news of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. He is coming back. In His name, Amen.